Uh, so these next few videos are going to be a little bit ambitious. I'm going to try to model for you or show you simple models um, for a few um, kind of standard uh, forces or interactions that show up in um, introductory physics class problems. So uh, one of these forces is called a tension. Um, uh, another one of these forces is called friction. And um, in the same vein, actually, it's, a, it's another sort of tension, but I'm going to um, describe it as a spring force or tension. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to model how tension in a rope or string um, can lead to forces on different objects in a problem. I'm going to uh, show you a simple model for friction between surfaces of objects, solid objects. So we're not going to consider um, air drag or anything uh, of that sort, but this is just two surfaces rubbing against each other. And then um, this sort of speaks for itself. It's about springs, things that can stretch like rubber bands. Okay, and these are all models, and the honest truth is, is these are extremely simple. Um, they're good for uh, just sort of building um, simple ways to think about real situations out in nature, but the truth is, is if you're an engineer, you're likely not going to use these very simple models. Um, but they will be informative on whether or not, for example, your engineered machine or engine uh, is going to work or have a chance of working. Um, but yeah, they are overly simple. They're just um, the sort of very first efforts that anybody ever would do to understand problems that involve tension, friction, and springs. Okay, so um, let's explore tension first. So here's an example. Um, so I'm going to draw a picture of two different objects. Here is a square-shaped object I'll call object number one. And here is a round object called object number two. And it doesn't matter what their shapes are, but they're just different shapes. And they are connected by a string. So this thing right here is the string. And the thing about this string is that it can be uh, under tension. That is, it can be sort of taut, like on a guitar. Um, yeah. So this tension uh, can lead to forces. So, and I don't let's not put can let's just say the tension on the string leads to forces so tension is the interaction we could assign this word to um, or we can say that tension is an example of a way that these two objects number one and number two can interact and under this tension, there can be forces on the two objects, one and two. So we can say, um, we're going to say this. Um, as a particular example, let's say that the tension in this string is 50 newtons. Um, yeah, and I've got these objects, one and two, and for the purposes of argument, let's say that um, this string, that is the material of the string, is at, uh, say, 60 degrees over to the right from vertical. So here's the vertical, and 60 degrees towards the right um, is the direction of the string. And so we can say that there is a force on object number one by object number two because of the tension T and this is a vector and it's equal to it's got a magnitude of 50 newtons i'm just modeling this is how you model uh, string tension forces 
it's 50 newtons. And acting on number one, it's up towards the right at that angle from vertical, right? So the force, direction, right, force is a vector, it acts along the direction of the string. This is how you model the force vector. So it's 50 newtons at 60 degrees, uh, let's say um, clockwise from vertical. So this right here, clockwise. That's the direction that the second hand moves and all the hands on a clock move. They move like that. This is the clockwise direction. So we sweep 60 degrees clockwise from vertical and that's the direction of the force acting upon object number one by object number two because of the tension. There is another force in this single interaction, um, and you, you can recall that this is just because of Newton's third law, or it's associated with Newton's third law. It is the force acting on the other object, on number two, by number one, because of the tension T in the string. And that force is also 50 Newtons in strength, but it is in the opposite direction. So let's say that this is, um, what's a convenient way? Oh, let's remember that I've got these two vertical lines and a straight line between. So this is also 60 degrees. And so if I sweep, um, oh, you, you, I already made a mistake. So very quickly, if we go look at this example, 60 degrees clockwise from vertical. I didn't, I didn't really specify uh, which vertical. Am I talking about from the upwards or from the downwards? Uh, let's say vertical up. So here's vertical up and we go clockwise by 60 degrees. Um, this is 60 degrees um, sweeping clockwise as well from vertical down. 60 degrees clockwise from vertical down. That's twisted up. It probably have been easier just to use the unit vectors i hat and j hat or whatever. But anyhow, um, yeah, I've got a direction. As convoluted as it is, it's, it's a direction. Um, I've got a magnitude. And this force is equal to but opposite to this force up here. That is, this and this are an action-reaction pair based on a tension interaction between two objects. Um, there is uh, an important comment. Um, so the forces are along the string that's one of the model um, ideas. So it's simple, and that's honestly um, probably what you would have expected or guessed yourself if you were the original engineer modeling a string tension force. Um, another comment to make, though, is unless otherwise described, say, in a problem, uh, assume the string is massless. So the reason why this is interesting is because if it's massless, then it doesn't require any force to cause it to accelerate. Um, if it is massive, then up in this problem I've got a mass, a mass, and another mass. And so if I wanted to study how this system of three masses accelerated around on the page under the influence of, say, gravity or other forces, then I'd have to consider the fact that the string also had a mass. And the truth is, is that makes your problem all of a sudden honestly really interesting, but also very, very difficult. Um, but if the string is massless, then there is no inertia cost to accelerating this this composite object around on the page 
uh, because we don't have that third flexible strange object in between. Another really important point is assume no stretch. The stretchy case is with springs and rubber bands. So stretch is treated in this model. But in the model for the tension of a massless string, the typical massless string that connects a couple of objects, you should assume that that string's length does not change. Of course, in reality, any real string or chain or rope has mass and will stretch. So yeah, the, but we are considering only simple models. So that's as far as I'm going to introduce the, a model for a simple, ideal, sometimes this word is in physics problems. It says, consider an ideal string that connects two objects, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that this is what's meant by ideal. All right, so let's